Uh, so I'm Lisa Clark. I'm director of Michigan's Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. Also serve as the chair of the UP Energy Task Force, which um, correctly is uh, more than 50% UPERS. Um, so we have had a wonderful time, I would say, over the last almost two years meeting and having conversations on this really critical topic. Um, and I've uh, grown close to many of my task force members. I'm disappointed that we don't get to do more uh, in person at the moment, but um, we look forward to doing that soon when it's uh, safe and we're able to do that. So um, I would love to give you an overview of what's going on from the state's perspective right now. Um, and to do so, I'm just gonna go a little bit backwards in time as well. Um, so this is an area that the governor's really been focused on since day one. And so I'm gonna describe a couple of different um, angles to the initiative, and then I'll try to sum up uh, kind of where things are at right now and where we're going. So um, to start with, again, as I mentioned, she's been focused on this since day one. And in fact, one of the early components was um, uh, early in her term, uh, she directed the Michigan Public Service Commission um, to uh, do the state Michigan statewide energy assessment. Um, so this uh, came out of uh, January 19th uh, challenges uh, with weather across the state and with our energy response. And so the governor directed the MPSC to do the C statewide energy assessment to evaluate whether the design of electric, natural gas, and propane delivery systems were adequate to account for the changing conditions and extreme weather events. So this is important because of some of the recommendations coming out of the C for propane and how these pieces connect together. So the governor asked the commission to uh, make recommendations on how to mitigate risk for the energy system. And so that recommendation came out in July 2019. And to date, the administration's taken steps on a, a few of these, um, a number of these recommendations. So I want to just share with you a little bit of what came out of the sea, and then we'll talk a bit about the UP Energy Task Force and how they tie together. So among the sea's recommendations around propane was to create an annual retail propane survey to monitor market trends and to continue to promote the use of pre-buy and lock-in price programs to reduce price and volatility for customers. As I think probably many of the audience is aware, the propane industry is a lightly regulated industry differently than um, other forms of energy in the state. Um, and so that survey is an opportunity to have some insight because it's not an, an industry that's regulated under the Public Service Commission. The report, the C report also noted that about two thirds of realtors surveyed developed contingency plans after the 2013-2014 propane supply disruption. So you're gonna hear that theme come up a couple of times too is what steps can be taken by industry to protect their own businesses as well as to protect their customers. The C also builds on those efforts to uh, develop a formal contingency plan for the supply and delivery of propane in the event of supply disruptions and also further work with owners and operators of critical propane assets to ensure availability of propane and natural gas liquids for Michigan residents who are users. Lastly, the C noted a more accurate accounting of inflow and outflow for propane supply and storage would be beneficial to all Michiganders and to identify opportunities where we could boost market resilience and add diversity of supply and additional infrastructure. So you'll see some of these threads then carry into the UP Energy Task Force and into the report that came out around propane. So just to reiterate a little and to get us all on the same page, the governor created UP Energy Task Force July of 2019. And the task was to assess overall UP energy needs and how they were currently met, formulate alternative solutions to meeting those needs, and identify and evaluate potential changes that could occur to the energy supply and distribution. As uh, was addressed earlier, the task force's first charge was that propane supply plan focused on alternative means to supply propane to the uh, UP and the Lower Peninsula. And this plan was released in April of 2020 and included recommendations to the administration as well as to the legislature. The task force, of course, is now working on a report to look at broader energy issues facing the UP. And that report will come out, um, as mentioned earlier, at the end of March. So to date, the administration has taken a number of steps around the recommendations in the propane version of the UP Energy Task Force report 
And I'll turn to those recommendations um, and uh, talk a bit about those and then um, connect them into the recommendations of the statewide energy assessment as well. So some of you are probably familiar with the UP Energy uh, Task Force's propane report or report one. Um, there were 14 recommendations covering a range of topics. One of the biggest takeaways, it's important to see that Michigan could be more resilient in the propane market against price spikes, no matter where they come from. Uh, so whether it is weather issues, whether it is changes to the market, changes to distribution and infrastructure, we need, there are, we need to be more resilient in this space. So some of the big headings recommendations. Um, one is evaluating potential changes in energy supply and distribution. And there was some discussion um, in that report about storage capacity. And so how we look at whether it be um, large bullet tanks or whether it be rail as storage, just having um, additional storage in order, or in the lower peninsula, there's ge or geological storage. So having storage uh, uh, be more available so that there's an ability to triage. Also in supply and distribution category, there was conversation about that supply infrastructure. So what's going on in our rail space and how is that an asset to um, bringing more uh, product to market? So to complement with, of course, um, pipeline as a, as a source and, and roads as a source. Another category was the monitoring of market conditions and early warning so signs of potential disruption. So again, because uh, I don't wanna say it's a non-regulated market, um, but it is a lightly regulated market, um, there isn't as much insight into what does that look like as there is in other areas of our energy markets uh, in the state as well as in other states. And so having more visibility into those market conditions so that we can see coming down the road, um, you know, what happened in 13, 2013, 2014 was a combination of multiple events so it was a combination of um, a pipeline that was shut down, a pipeline that was reversed, um, a very wet fall, which led to a high use of propane for drying in the agriculture industry, and then a polar vortex on top of it. And so it was a confluence of those events as you know, some of these challenges often are. It's multiple things happening all at once. Another area was addressing the high cost of energy in the Upper Peninsula. So of course, um, this is something that the task force spent a lot of time looking at and understanding what type of assistance programs exist right now. And then how could those assist assistance programs look differently? And that's something that um, has already been uh, uh, addressed. In fact, there's already been legislation moving forward to take a look at that. And then um, state contract for propane. So might there be a way for the state to actually use its purchasing power as well? And the final category, uh, coming out of the early version of the UP Energy Task Force around propane was consumer protection. So what consumer protection laws are out there? Um, what consumer protection laws do we see in other states? And how might there be an opportunity there uh, for additional uh, protection for customers from uh, bad actors? And let's be clear, not all of this industry is bad actors. I'm certainly not implying that, but just that we can look at our consumer protection laws to protect our customers against bad actors. So going forward and tying all these pieces together, the administration is focused on uh, some principles that I'll share here that you'll see um, are, are threads that come out of the report, the UP Energy Task Force propane report and come out of the statewide energy assessment. So one of the first principles when we talk about energy and I know some of uh, my colleagues on this line are gonna um, uh, completely agree with me here, which is energy efficiency. We always wanna start with weatherization and tightening down structures, et cetera, um, because we don't want to be uh, losing energy and we don't wanna be in a position where um, we are um, uh, having, uh, we're, we wanna uh, make sure that we have as many megawatts as possible, right? So the best kilowatt or the best, Therm of energy is the one that you don't have to use at all. So we wanna start with energy efficiency. Um, the second piece is uh, protecting customers. So what sort of assistance support is there and what sort of consumer protection might we wanna take? So when we say assistance support, for example, um, the deliverable fuels have different programs than the fuels that, um, than, than electricity and some of your other uh, types of um, energy sources. And so, 
What can we do there around assistance support? Um, is there a need to um, look at programs differently that are supported by the state? Is there a way that we can better help our low income residents um, and better protect them um, from uh, price fluctuations? Because it does, that was something that was very clear in the conversations of the UP Energy Task Force was that our low income residents are our most vulnerable and our, our Alice communities are our most vulnerable. Um, because they aren't able to lock in um, steady prices. But there are some really innovative programs in the propane industry. And I think there are ways um, that our, our Department of Health and Human Services is working on programs with the Public Service Commission and others to design uh, ways to better support our low income residents. The third category um, to focus on is really, again, because this is a market with limited regulation, market signals are vital in order to um, for the market to make decisions for businesses in the state and outside of the state to make decisions. So it's really important what the governor has done around the line and clearly saying um, that the line should be shut down in May. So that sends a clear market signal. Um, after the polar vortex, as I mentioned earlier in 13 and 14, a lot of providers added storage like Chris Bowman, who's gonna speak a little bit in a little bit. You know, those are steps that um, uh, propane providers are able to take to protect their customers and also to protect their businesses in longer term. Um, our businesses in Michigan are very smart and they're gonna look at what does the industry look like and how can they best maneuver for their own business as well as to protect their customers. So um, demonstrating clear market signals gives businesses the opportunity to help ensure availability of that product. So I always anticipate that we'll see um, these successful businesses um, in this market working to prepare for different dynamics. The fourth category is monitoring so that we have more visibility into propane um, and to the propane market. And this is something that the Public Service Commission is working on um, and what can they do again in this deregulated space, but um, to give more visibility into the types of um, uh, issues we might see coming that could have an, outpack, an impact on our, on our residents um, because of them coming together in a confluence. And so this is, again, something the public service is looking at and working to um, increase their visibility into so that they can telegraph where things are going. And finally, from the state's perspective, the state is using every tool in the toolbox as an outcome of the UP Energy Task Force and the C across state departments to think about um, how we, as the state of Michigan, can support um, what's going moving forward in the industry. So. For example, MDOT's got a study on railroads and they're looking at um, uh, railroad traffic and railroad spurs. Um, from an Eagle perspective, we've got a variety of things. One thing is um, looking at our brownfield program and where brownfields might be available to consider, you know, are there additional aspects to lines or to um, additional storage pieces that could be helpful. Um, there's a couple of providers in the Upper Peninsula that are using the MDOT Rail Economic Development Fund so they can add capacity. There was money proposed in the budget uh, that the executive recommendation that just came out um, this week um, to support potentially additional storage if the legislature decides to move that forward. And then there's just a variety of other things from site selection perspective and um, other angles uh, to try to support um, what it brings to bear the tools that the state of Michigan might have um, in order to uh, uh, support the industry and move things forward. Um, so that is uh, kind of a high level overview of all the different things that are at play. Um, but again, um, coupling with, you know, that statewide energy assessment that started in January 2019 um, and the pieces that came out of that review, as well as the UP Energy Task Force propane report and all the conversations that happened there, um, you can see that there are a lot of pieces at play uh, to support um, potential changes to the propane market. Um, and that they have been ongoing for quite some time. Um, you'll also see that it does span state government. So I'll do my best when we take some questions to talk about the areas that um, are uh, closer to the Eagle world. Um, and I'll also try to illuminate the areas that aren't as close to the Eagle world. So 